Okay, um, part three of the force of a charged particle in a magnetic field. I want to just talk a little bit more about what happens when they do go in circles and in, in um, spiral paths. Okay, so um, if we do have, say, a field this way, by this time I'm hoping that you know that that's a field going into the paper. And um, here comes a positive charge. then um, the first thing it's going to feel when it comes in here is it's going to feel a force um, up. So that's going to cause it to go up and then, or to the top of the page at least, and then it's going to feel a, a force that way. Yeah, that, that way. Then it will feel a force down and so on. So it might curl, it might leave the field, but you know, depending on speed, it, it might curl around. And it will go in a certain radius, R. And so um, that's circular motion. So let's apply some circular motion. It's um, A equals F net over M. Like an old friend. Um, now, um, A is, if it's circular motion, A is V squared over R. And since it did enter um, perpendicularly, I'm going to say that the, the only force on this right now is um, Q V cross B. And then divide it by M. The net force is, is the magnetic force. Okay, well, um, if these are perpendicular to one another, this can just be simplified to V squared over R is equal to QVB all over M. We got a V on both sides, so let's, let's get rid of that. And so um, now it just depends on what we want to solve for. If we want to know the radius of the circle it's going to be in, Maybe I'll bring the R here and all this stuff over there. So R is equal to MV over QB. Let's talk about that for a second, why that should be the case. Okay, does it make sense that if you have a bigger mass that you'll have, the thing will go in a, in a bigger radius? Just because of inertia. Like the, the more mass it has, the wider the circle it's going to be. Now, the faster it's going, the wider the circle it's going to be too. You probably know that just from when you, when you drive a car. If the faster you go, the wider the turn is. Okay, but Q, the bigger Q is, that just makes your force bigger on you. And so the bigger Q is, the bigger the force on you, and so the tighter the circle. Like if you made Q go to zero charge, no charge at all, the, the particle wouldn't go in a circle. It would go in a straight line. Or in other words, it'd have a radius. What is a, what is a radius of infinity? If a circle has a radius of infinity, we, we sometimes say that that's a straight line. Hey, if we dial up the B, if we make B, the magnetic field, a lot stronger, do you see how that also causes a tighter turn? Okay, so all these things affect the the magnetic field, or excuse me, the radius of the turn. Now, you're not always solving for R. Sometimes you're solving for V. Sometimes you're solving for M. But you always start out with this equation, and it's just a real quick, a real quick der derivation. Okay, um, just one more thing then. Um, this is going to be a short video, but I just want to um, comment then about the, that helix again. So I, I don't know if you if you caught that before, but here comes a here comes a charged particle. We'll have it go this way again, and if um, B is this way, that's B. It's only this part of V that's gonna. It's the perpendicular part that is going to cause it to have a force, and so let me put my thumb in the direction of the. I'm only going to use the perpendicular part. And B is that way, so it's gonna. The first thing it's gonna do as it comes in, here it comes like that. It's gonna get pushed down. Would you agree? Pushed down. So it's coming in like this, and it's gonna get pushed down. 
Now the next thing it's going to do, if it's heading down, and the if it's heading, it was heading this way, and then it it gets pushed down. The next thing it's going to do is it's if it starts heading down, is it's going to get pushed that way. Yeah, because the field is still that way, so that's going to get pushed that way. Now if it starts heading that way, then it's going to be pushed up. And so it's going to go around in a circle like this. But this part of the V is going to carry it along. And so it's going to go like that. Shoom, shoom, shoom. Do you want to know how fast it's going to go in that direction? I'll tell you how fast it's going to go in that direction. If this is theta, it will go V cosine of theta in that direction. That's how fast it will go to the in the x direction. Okay, if you want to know um, about the radius of the circle it's going to go in as it does that, the radius of the circle is going to be just apply um, a equals f net over m and v squared. But this v squared is going to be v sine of theta. It's going to be this part, all over r, v squared over r, and that's equal to um, qvb. Now the, the v that matters here is going to be v sine of theta times b, um, all over r, uh, all over m rather. Okay, so that's the math for that. All right, so that's all I have to tell you. Short videos. Bye.